So in class today, we didn't quite get to finish all of our problems. We had like two problems left. And I thought, ah, oh, these are good problems. Involving one of my favorite topics, sneetches. So this is an example of a, of a sneetch. And you'll notice there's a, a, a star on that belly. And uh, that's part of the problem. So let's get into it. Let's finish them up. All right, so the problem. Now the star belly sneeches had bellies with stars. The plain belly sneeches had none upon ours. Then one day, Sylvester McMonkey McBean came to town with his wondrously wonderful machine. Just one pass through, hop on board, and you will have a star for sure. The sneeches listened and the sneeches thought, and those who wanted a star belly stepped up and bought. Now, Sylvester kept track of the proportion of sneeches with the stars, called P. And notice with time, called T in months, that P prime is one third T times one minus P quantity squared. His business was quick. He did not want to delay. And so he recalled on his very first day that P equals one fourth. To make a quick buck, and then leave this place, he decided to leave when P is three-fourths. How many months then will it take until Sylvester McMonkey McBean leaves this place? All right, there's a lot to parse here. If you're not familiar, by the way, with this story, this came from a Dr. Seuss book. Now, there's a lot here, but if we just strip it down and say, where's the math? We say, all right, there's this differential equation here. P prime is one third T times one minus P squared. So that's going to be the big part. And then there's two things. We're told initially on the first day, P equals one fourth. So this is like our initial condition. And now our question is, when does P equals three fourths? And so really, while there's all this fun language here, you can strip most of it away and say, oh, we're given a differential equation with an initial condition and we're asked, when does our function attain a certain value? All right, that doesn't seem so bad, right? Well, we hope not. Okay, so let's begin. So looking at our differential equation, we have P prime. So one third T times one minus P squared. Well, of course, P prime, is just another way of saying DP DT. And no surprise, given that it's from today, this is separable. And so you can move the one minus P squared across, move the DT across, and we get DP divided by one minus P quantity squared is one third T DT. All right, so now that's it for the separate, which means we can go into the integrate. So, we integrate both sides. Now, how do we integrate something like dp over one minus p squared? Well, you could also write this, notice because it's squared, we could write it as p minus one quantity squared, because it doesn't matter uh, if you have a negative there, when you square it, it becomes positive. And, but it's downstairs, so we can write it to the minus two power. So it's hard to see that, but there's a minus two I just wrote, dp. And now we say, oh, okay. So the way you integrate something to a power is, uh, of course, and this is simple on the inside, uh, what you do is you would add one to the power. So uh, in this case, you would end up with P minus one to the minus one. And then of course you need to divide by that new power. So that's a minus there. On the other side, well, that'll be 1, 6, t squared, because we have a 1 third already. Integral of t is t squared over 2. And so you have a third and a half, and they combine to make 1 over 6. All right. And then, of course, don't forget your plus c. Now, if you clean this side up over here, you'll have 1 over the minus can go inside again. And it's 1 minus p. All right, so 1 over 1 minus p is 1 6 t squared plus c. 
Now you might say, all right, let's solve for P, except we actually don't have to. You see, if you look at what's happening here, what we have is a relationship between P and T, and our question doesn't ask us to solve for P. It really says, hey, we're looking for a time, a time when something interesting happens. So we can say, all right, well, let's just figure it out. Well, step one, let's use our initial condition. So our initial condition says, well, initially, and we think of our initial time as being time zero, we have P equals one fourth. Whoops, I was getting ahead of myself. I almost wrote down three fourths. That's the ending condition. All right, so plug it in. One minus one fourth is what? Well, that's three fourths. Flip it, you get four thirds equals one six times zero squared. Zero plus C. Done. Great. All right. So now we know C. So one over one minus P is equal to one six T squared plus four thirds. And now we say, all right, we want to know when does P equal three fourths. So the last step for us, plug in three fourths, simplify, solve for T, and life is good. Life is wonderful. All right, so let's do that. So we put in our P equals three over four. And what do we get? Well, we're going to get 1 over 1 minus 3 over 4. That's 1 over 1 fourth. Flip it, that's 4. That's going to equal 1 six t squared plus 4 thirds. Okay, well, hmm, move things around. We can put the 4 minus 4 thirds. Now 4 is 12 thirds, and so... Uh, if we take 12 thirds, subtract 4 thirds, that's 8 thirds, which will be equal to 1 6 t squared. Multiply both sides by 6. 48 divided by 3 will give us 16 is t squared. And so that tells us that t equals 4. Now, of course, plus or minus, but we understand that we're talking about a, a problem where it's said in the real world. So time can't run backwards. He's like, aha, I'm going to leave four months ago. And I'm like, no, no, I can't. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. And so our time it takes until Sylvester McMonkey McBean leaves is four months. And there we go. Yeah, I like this one. Part of it is there's this tendency like, ah, I must solve for P. And it's like, wait, do I have to? Because you could, but... But why do more work if you don't have to? It's sort of a, a wonderful philosophy. Yeah, do the work, but the right amount of work. So, all right. Well, there was actually still one more problem after this one. So let's do the other one too. All right. Find y, given that y prime is one plus x plus y plus xy, and y of zero is equal to two. All right, now you look at this and say, ah, uh, gah, it doesn't feel separable because we have a bunch of stuff being added. Now, separable, you want a function of x times a function of y. We don't have that here. Not yet, but maybe, maybe it actually is there. You see, there's this idea that says, you know, it might not be written in the right way. And you might say, well, what does that mean? Well, it says maybe there's a way to rewrite it using our wonderful skills, particularly our algebra skills, to help us find a way to say, ah, this is a better way to represent what's going on. Now, in our case, we say, okay, the question is, can we write this as a product? And now, it's not just sort of like, oh, of course, you know, Steve knows how it's going to go. 
I kind of do know how it's going to go. But that's not why we're asking that question. We think, you know, severable says, oh, it's several if you can write as something involving x, something involving y. So it suggests if severable is the way to do this, there should be a way to write this. All right. Well, now we think about what would our, our pieces have to be. Well, we see an x, y in there. So one term will have like an x and one term will have a y. And then a 1, not a lot to make ways to make one and they say well what about something like this one plus x one plus y well does it work you get one and then there's x and then there's y and then there's x y wow almost like it was planned to happen because it was planned to happen <laughs> yes of course it was of course it was all right well now that we have that we say okay great and uh, so it's ready for us. So actually the hard part was what we just did, was to say, hey, this really is separable. So be on the lookout. Sometimes separable equations can be slightly obscured. So make sure you're like, ah, I see you, and I know what to do. All right, so the rest of this shouldn't be too bad. We'll just go through the process. We'll separate dy over 1 plus y is equal to 1 plus x dx. And now the next step is we'll integrate because that's the procedure. So we integrate both sides. Integral of dy over 1 plus y is log of 1 plus y. And uh, don't worry too much absolute value or parentheses. We're not going to be sticklers for that. It's log of something. All right, equals on this other side. Well, integral of 1 is x. Integral of x squared is a half x squared. And then, of course, plus c. All right, good. Now, what do we have? Well, we have y of 0 equals 2. Now, we can just sort of eyeball. Does it make sense to plug it in now? Well, we can. Why not? And let's see what we have. So that says anytime when x is 0, y is 2. So log of 1 plus 2 is equal to 0 plus a half times 0 squared plus c, or c is natural log of 3. Okay, great. We've done it. We've solved for c. But we really want y. Okay, so we should clean it up a little bit more. And how do we do that? Well, We'll do it by getting rid of the log, which we use the exponential function to do that. So we have that 1 plus y will be equal to e to the x plus a half x squared plus natural log of 3. But we can really think of this as x plus a half x squared plus natural log of 3. You're like, well, of course you can't, Steve. Why not? And now we say, oh, addition up here in the exponent, I can think of this as the first term times the second term. So e to the x plus a half x squared times e to the log 3, which makes us 3 e to the x plus 1 half x squared. And finally, we have our y. There's a plus 1, so we subtract. We get y is equal to 3 e the x plus one half x squared minus one and that's our answer all right well those were two fun problems and of course there's lots of problems we'll see several problems again particularly when we talk about population models but in some sense they're fairly straightforward no big surprises separate integrate uncomplicate and life is good so make sure you know how to do it but be ready, because there's more fun stuff just around the corner.